I like her. Let me just put that over there. Thanks. Hey, good morning once again, everybody. Like I said, my name is Matt Foreman, and uh, I'm the lead pastor here. I just want to say happy Easter. Yeah, there we go. Uh, hey, uh, those of you online, uh, we're glad that you're here, but I'm going to talk about something that is kind of going to exclude you. So uh, on your way out today, you all are going to get these uh, cool candy bars that says, He is risen, just as he said. And so uh, Jack Schoenthaler, yeah. So Jack Schoenthaler, who's in the back, he was like, man, that looks so pretty. Nobody's going to want to open. And I said, well, if the grave is empty, I, uh, then, then I, can get, I can dig into this, right? So, like, uh, so that'll be good. So you can grab those treats on your way out today. I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't going to throw this over here because that's going to distract me the whole rest of the service. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am glad that you're here this morning. If you want to uh, grab a Bible, if you brought one with you, or if you're uh, online with us, you can grab a Bible. Turn to, uh, let's see, we're going to be in, uh, where are we going to be in this morning? I lost my place. Romans chapter 6, that's right. Romans chapter 6 this morning. Uh, if you don't have a Bible with you, that's okay. Uh, you can go to sermons.church. We actually put all of our sermon notes on there, and the scriptures and all that will be there, and they're interactive message notes, so you can plug in some of the fill in blanks and all that kind of stuff there as well. All right, and to get us started this morning, I actually, uh, this was actually not part of the Easter design, but I wanted to bring a prop with me this morning, and I want to talk about uh, this plant uh, this morning as my opening introductory thought. Uh, this plant normally sits on a, a glass round table in the atrium, and some of you uh, who are probably green thumb kind of people like Kim Carpenter probably actually know what this is. I have no idea what this is, uh, but uh, was, you might have that, all that information, but uh, I've sent, said before that my wife Lee and I, uh, we, uh, we literally kill everything. We can't keep a plant uh, alive uh, worth our salt. And so uh, I, I was thinking about this plant this week because a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had a meeting on a Tuesday morning out in the atrium with a couple of people. And this was sitting on there and I actually moved it away uh, so I could see the other person and all that. And, um, and so it looked fine. I mean, things were looking good. And then, but like the next day I came into the office and literally every, well, I'm gonna do this and some of you are gonna hate me because it's your plant people, but every single leaf was like this. Like every, like it was like, it was crazy. And, uh, and so I was like, all right, I was just thinking with Leah, like, oh, here's another plant, you know, going to the, you know, plant dead world, you know, we're just going to go put in the dumpster, all that kind of stuff. And Leah's like, you know, like, let, let's try to, let's put some water in it, see if we can revive it, all that kind of stuff, whatever. And I'm like, I don't know, this thing is like, it's, it's way dead, right? And so we put some water in it, whatever. And I went to my office, worked for a couple hours, and I came out and, and looked to, I happened to just look to the right, and like literally every single one of the leaves was up, like standing at attention, perky saying, yes, sir, right? And I was like, oh, Leah, the dead plant has been revived. It was great, it's amazing, it's a miracle. All those kinds of things, right? <laughs> and uh, hey, by the way, do you know that plants need water to live? generally works that way, all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm gonna put this back down here. Uh, so I tell you that story this morning uh, because where we're headed this Easter morning, folks, is that we, uh, as we celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, is to talk about the fact that the resurrection of Jesus, folks, the resurrection of Jesus has significance. It has significant significance, if I can say it that way. Uh, just like the water for this plant had significance in that moment to revive it, folks. The resurrection has significance to our lives and directly results. Uh, we, have, we can see direct results because of the resurrection. We're going to talk a lot about that today. And so where we're heading in our uh, topic this morning is uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 6, like I said. And uh, I think there's some really cool stuff for us in, in this this morning. Um, so let's look, at, let's look at our text this morning, Romans chapter 6. Uh, let's read about uh, 10 verses here. Come up on the screen. It says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For we, if we have been uh, united with him in a death like his, we certainly also will be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. You know, do not offer 
any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been bought or brought, been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. And so our title of our talk this weekend is Buried Alive, How God Turned Graves. And I, maybe I should have said turns graves instead of uh, into gardens. And uh, that's why we sang that last song uh, together this morning. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about two benefits, uh, two advantages that we get or we can get uh, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And how ultimately, where we're headed this morning, how we can truly brave life's uh, graves and because of a risen, risen Savior. And so that's where we're headed this morning. Uh, but before we go on, I want to pause and pray and then I'll give you a couple things to think about. So if you would pray with me. So God, we just thank you. We praise you this morning uh, for a, a grave that is empty and that you, uh, that death is, has no mastery over you. And God, what that means for us as we look into this text this morning, God, we pray that you would make our hearts, our minds, our souls sticky and supernatural things would stick to us, God. That this would have significant meaning in our lives because the resurrection is significant you would teach us. God, if I stand here and just talk for the next few minutes, I'm not sure it's going to be worth much, but if you come and teach us and do amazing things among us like you do, then I think it'll be well worth it to celebrate on this Easter Sunday. So do this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, two points. You can write this down as we look at how to truly brave life as a direct result of the risen Savior. First one is this, brave life's graves because the resurrection, here we go, proves gardens are in God's wheelhouse are in God's wheelhouse. You can write that in. Gardens are in God's wheelhouse. Uh, here's what I mean by that, folks. It, this, this point simply comes down to this. Uh, do you know that God can make beautiful things out of messy situations? My God is a God who can make beautiful things, B-E-A, beautiful things, out of messy, messy situations. And we're going to talk about that. It is way in his wheelhouse. Now, for us to get the full context of what we're going to talk about in this, we've got to uh, go back to uh, the verse that I started with this morning at the very uh, top of our service from Luke chapter 24. I want to read a couple other verses. This is the resurrection story. This gives us the context of all of this this morning. It says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found that the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember, he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, but be crucified and on the third day be raised again. So in context, folks, if we look at this resurrection story, I'm actually looking at my mom back here. She's been posting all these things on her Facebook about all this, this journey of what the last week has been. And as if we look in the context of all of this, God made a beautiful thing out of a really messy situation. I mean, if you think about it, right, uh, Jesus was dead Friday. And his friends, the disciples, and, and even these women, right, they, 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 might be, uh, they might be very feeling very lost in this moment, right? They're, they might be thinking in their own heads, man, we've seen him do many miracles, many things that, that, that don't even logically make sense, like we talked about last week. You know, we've seen him do all of these things, and yet he's dead. What now? What's next? And they begin to feel uh, this, this, a little bit of this, this sense of helplessness. Maybe a, a lot of helplessness. Actually, I think that's an emotion that um, probably all of us have felt one time or another, probably. And the, we can empathize and recognize the anguish and, and, and the gloom that might be in that as, they're, as they're, they put him in the tomb and, they, and they're waiting and they wake up on Saturday. And then they wake up on Sunday morning and they're having that same feeling. We, we've all been there. We've had that kind of anguish, right? Actually, Pastor Josh and I, um, we, were, we meet every Wednesday morning and we were talking about this message and we were talking about Easter weekend and those kind of things. And, and we were talking about that sense of, of, of the disciples and what they must have felt like. What, what must have, the emotion would they have been going through? And it was interesting as, we sat, as I sat across the table from Pastor Josh, he actually began to weep. He began to empathize with what was going on in the disciples, even in that moment, some now 2,000 years later. But then, 
right? But then, right, the women at, 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 at no longer, um, and, and long term, right, the, the disciples, these women, these, these disciples, they go to the tomb, right? They go to the tomb. And the stone is already rolled away, right? It's already gone. And they go in and Jesus isn't there. And they are asked and told in verses five and six of, of Luke, right? It says, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is r- risen. And remember, he told you, right? He told you this was going to happen, right? Your, your, your teacher, your rabbi, be, he's going to be crucified. And on the third day, be raised again. Essentially, he, what they were saying to, to the, these women is saying, hey, all, all you're seeing is the grave, all you're looking at is the grave, but remember, right? Remember that, that the garden is coming. Come on, somebody. The garden is coming. And then, of course, Jesus goes through and he, he shows himself to the disciples. This plays out in these chapters as they go on, right? They, they realize that the garden truly is coming, and it's here. Right? The grave is empty. And so what does this mean for us on this Easter 2021, folks? Well, the reality is, folks, that, that, that moment when they realize that the garden is coming, that has been the story, that has been the line from Easter to Easter to Easter since that first Easter. And can I tell you, that is our, that is our mantra that I want, I don't know about you, but I want to grab onto this year, that the garden is coming. The message is indeed the same. It says in our Romans text, that's our main text for today, verses four and five, it says, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, then look at this, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly, I like that, we will certainly, which means there's no question, we will certainly also be united with him in a res- resurrection like his. So essentially what this is saying in our text today, folks, is that um, because of the resurrection, because because it didn't end at the cross, because Jesus actually rose from the dead, if we've made him the Lord of our life, if we are a follower of Jesus, we've given over the driver's seat of our life to him, what that means is that uh, we can look beyond the graves of our life. We can look beyond the graves. Can I tell you, there's going to be graves in our life, right? Right? There's going to be graves. There's going to be negative stuff. But folks, we have the ability to look beyond the graves. It's not the only thing that we get to see. The resurrection proves that gardens are all in God's wheelhouse. By the way, I didn't know this, but did you know that wheelhouse is like a baseball term? And it means the strike zone. It's the wheelhouse. You know that God makes the strike zone every time? Every time. Renewal, what I want to get to this morning is that renewal and restoration, folks, are possible because of the resurrection in your life, in my life. God can make a beautiful thing out of a messy situation that maybe you're going through right now. I actually made a list of things that I maybe think, maybe this might jive with some of you this morning. Folks, he can make a beautiful thing in your life after your divorce. He can make a beautiful thing after you've lost your job. He can make a beautiful thing after after the death of a loved one. He can make a beautiful thing after a sickness that you're maybe in the middle of. He can can make beautiful things when you're feeling emotionally beat up. He can make beautiful things when your boss yells at you. He can make beautiful things when you are dealing with a mistake that you've made. Maybe there's a physical mistake. Maybe you messed up on the internet. God can make beautiful things out of messy situations, amen? He can make beautiful things. And, And for me, as I walk through... April of 2021, folks, after the last year that we have experienced, I'm ready to grab on to the garden. I'm ready to grab on to the beautiful thing. And, and, I, and, I, and I think you, you might be sitting there thinking, okay, well, Matt, yeah, that's great and whatever, but you're just looking at one verse. Here's a couple other verses. First Peter 5.10. This is what God does. It says, in the God of all grace who called you into his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, listen, after you've suffered for a little while, will himself, look at this, restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. There's a promise of the one holy true God. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will, listen to that, he will, that's not, he will think about it, he will lift you up. He will. 
Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is, in all things, God works for the good of you. God works for the good. Some of you might need to hear that today. God works for the good. And yes, we are gonna have troubles in life. Things are not gonna always go our way, but God is still, by the way, do you know God is still sovereign? Like the, the coronavirus stuff in the last year and all those kind of things and all the heartache, that, that has not been a surprise to God. God is now using it to his glory. He is still sovereign. God is the garden producer, folks. That's what I wanna get at today. He is the garden producer. In the depths of our darkest graves and our darkest spots of our lives in the challenges, it is in his wheelhouse. He is the garden producer. By the way, I don't know, I honestly don't know how people go throughout life without Jesus. Like the, some of the ch most challenging things that I've had to go through in my life, and, and I, I love my wife and I love my kids, and they do help me, and, and we do family life together, but I would absolutely have not been where I'm at today without a relationship with Jesus Christ in my life to get me through my darkest graves. And the resurrection proved, folks, that this was, was not just a concept anymore. This was reality, absolute proof that God sent his son Jesus to die a painful death for us so ultimately that we could have a, a relationship with God and we don't have to sit in our graves. We can actually look for the garden. He, God, is the repairer, the renewer, the restorer. It's what he does. By the way, that's the Easter story. That is the Easter story. So I was just thinking about my life. Uh, some of you know, because I, I, you've been close to me, but over the last six weeks or so, um, man, I will tell you, I've, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of coming off of a season in my life where um, I've been feeling pretty emotionally beat up. Just be real transparent with you this morning. I've been really feeling really emotionally beat up um, to, to the point where uh, last Sunday, I woke up and I literally, this is the first time I've ever been in ministry and I've had this uh, conversation with God. I was like, God, I don't even want to go to church today. Like to the point where, I'm just being real transparent, Leah said to me, she goes, maybe we just need to hang it up. It was a tough six weeks. But you know what God did this week? God just brought me so much encouragement. I mean, people who I haven't talked to for a long time, just out of the blue said, hey, I just want to tell you how you changed my life. Hey, man, I want to encourage you. Like, I've been, I've been meaning to tell you for like the last couple months, but I, but I never sent you a message. Hey, I want to let you know how much I really appreciate this, 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 and this, and all the things I do. God, God started to bring a garden in my grave. And then if you were here last weekend, man, we saw a move of the Holy Spirit in this place, did we not? And it was interesting because after church, people were like, oh, pastor, that was a great message. That wasn't me because I had nothing. I literally had nothing. Like, I'll just be really transparent. Like, there's times, folks, where I can come in and I love people and I can get really excited and all that kind of stuff. But literally last weekend, I had nothing. And so we saw a move of the Holy Spirit that we haven't seen in a, in a little while here at Cornerstone. And man, I tell you what, did that juice me up? See, you see all this stuff, right? And, and life is going to happen and stuff's going to get bad and all that kind of stuff. But God is the God who can bring gardens in our graves. It's in his wheelhouse. You can actually write this statement in on your handout. Junk is going to come our way, but God's got a harvest to put in its place. Junk is going to come, by the way, junk is a biblical term. All right, just so you can taste your one. Junk is going to come our way, but God's got a harvest to put in its place. Folks, that is a very true statement. And I know when we're going through it, I mean, the last six weeks, Lee and I were going through this. I mean, it was tough, and it was hard to remember that at times. But, man, there is a harvest that is coming because of the resurrection. Because if we say yes to Jesus, man, he can bring a harvest in the midst of the most challenging circumstances and situations. And so with that, uh, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to pause the message for a minute. And I want to pray. I want to pray for some of you this morning. Um, and if you're online and you want me to pray for you, just say, include me, and we'll include you in this prayer. Um, but I wanted to pray, um, if there are any of you, that maybe you're in a season of, you're what I would call a grave season. You're, you've been like what I was the last six weeks or so. You're in a grave season, um, and, and it's really all you've been able to focus on, and you want to see the garden, I want to take some time and pray for you. So if you're in that boat, like if you're in a grave season, would you just raise your hand so we can pray for you this morning? Anybody need prayer, grave season? Okay, a couple people. Okay, keep your hands up because we're going to pray for you. Okay, if you want to get in on it, just keep, you know, it's okay. 
Raise your hand real quick. Okay. Again, if you're online, say include me. We're gonna we're gonna include you. Uh, we got Tyler's in the booth too, so we're gonna we're gonna somebody put your hand on Tyler, would you? Okay. What I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do something because last weekend we talked about people laying on hands and people can do like God can do supernatural things. So um, even with the coronavirus, we're gonna do this. So if there's somebody with you with a hand up, would you put their your hand on somebody put at least one hand on every person in the room? Okay. Put a hand on them. We're gonna pray for them. Okay. So Father God, we want to pray right now for these people that you don't have to keep your hands up the whole time. Okay. So God, we want to pray for these people right now. They're they're saying to you. God, uh, this morning, as I, I think this is a reason they were here this morning. We're going to include those online this morning, Father, that ultimately they're in a grave season right now. And they need a glimpse of the garden. God, would you please, in Jesus' name, would you give them a glimpse of the garden when they leave this place today? When they go throughout the rest of their resurrection Sunday, because this is what the resurrection has proven that is, is capable for you to do, is to bring a, a, a garden in the midst of the grave season. God, I pray that you would do that in the next two hours. You would give them that. And then also, not even a glimpse of the garden, God, I pray in Jesus' name that their grave season would come to a close. That it would come to a close, and ultimately, God, as I feel today, so much more renewed and restored and repaired. God, I pray that you bring, I pray all heaven to earth on their life right now, Lord Jesus, that you would come and you would repair, you would renew, you would restore. God, you would, as the scripture says, you will lift them up in Jesus' name. And that next week, we can even hear the stories and the testimonies of all the things that you've done, just like you've done for my life this last week. Thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for moving around the room. Uh, if you raised your hand, would you send me an email this week? Uh, I'm, Lee and I are actually leaving literally right after vac uh, to go on vacation. We're like driving 12 hours to go to South uh, uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. But I'm going to pray. I'm still going to spend time with God on the beach this week. So <laughs> I want to pray for you. Okay. So seriously, if you raise your hand, would you, I, I want to pray in my prayer time uh, this week as I'm uh, on the beach and praying for you. Um, those kind of things. Okay. So email me that. Okay. Uh, my email is matt at cornerstonevineyard.church. Okay. Pretty, it's pretty simple. All right. So that's, the, thanks for letting me pray for you, by the way. Um, that's point number one, brave life's uh, graves because the resurrection proves gardens are in God's wheelhouse. Second thing, brave life's graves because the resurrection solidified Jesus as a finisher. Let me write that down. Solidify Jesus as a finisher. Now, I'm going to be really, again, more transparency from me this morning. Uh, this is the picture I really wanted to use for this right here. Right there. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind, like the Terminator, right? All right. Um, so basically, the this concept of this point, as we get ready to get close in the next uh, few minutes here, is that uh, the, the resurrection proved that Jesus was the terminator. He was the finisher, right? It says back in our uh, Romans text in verse six, it says, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be, and then I underline this, done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So I, I was thinking about that done away with, and I looked it up in the original language this week, and it's this word, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it says to cause, to cease, put an end to, do away with, abolish, and then I underline, to be severed from, and I like that language, to be severed from. So because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, because the, the, the death on the cross didn't end there, but that the grave was empty, folks, what that means is that, that we have an option to be severed from our life of sin. That's good news. Meaning, God can finish our past and present struggles. He can sever them and be done away with them. So not just give us the, the gardens out of the graves eventually, but God can do things today, not just necessarily tomorrow. He's a finisher. And then that got me thinking. I know some of you are going to like, Matt, what are you doing? Um, that got me thinking. How many did anybody ever remember the like 1990s uh, Super Nintendo game, uh, Mortal Kombat? Anybody, okay, I almost didn't do this part because it is a very gruesome kind of game and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so don't go home. So Matt's promoting Mortal Kombat. Okay, I'm not I'm not doing all that stuff, right? Um, but if you remember right, they had characters like Johnny Cage and Kano and Scorpio and, and Sub Zero, right? Like like all that. Well, if you, if you ever played the game, near the end of the game, right, what, what was that? It came in, right? It was like, finish him, right? Just like that, finish him, right? Now, of course, what happened after that, sometimes they rip people's heads off, all that kind of stuff. So again, it's a gruesome game. Gruesome game, okay? All that kind of stuff. 
But this is what came into my mind this week as I got to this idea of Jesus as a finisher, right? Um, in some ways, I was thinking about, the, again, the disciples, right? In some ways, Good Friday, they might have felt like they were the ones uh, that just lost, that they have just been finished. Their savior, their, their rabbi, their teacher is dead. They might feel like uh, you're playing the, the Mortal Kombat game, right? Like they have just literally lost the game. But then Sunday comes. And then Sunday comes and it brings a whole new perspective, right? The battle wasn't actually over. Am I the only one excited about this? <laughs> Folks, the battle wasn't over, right? Like it, they, they were feeling that way. And, and yet, right, at that point, right, the, just that part of the fight was over. And then again, I'm going to just, my brain was working weird places this week. So... <laughs> Some of you who maybe you've been around Christian culture for a long time or the church, you might know this. But back in the 80s, there was a, a, an artist named Carmen. And yeah, some of you, uh, we just showed our age. Thanks. All right. Now, some of you don't know, Aunt Carmen actually just passed away from cancer. Um, but uh, he had a song that he did back in 1984, I believe, called The Champion. And... Uh, and so I was thinking about the champion this week, and I was going to just show you the whole video, but it's like eight minutes, and I can't take up eight minutes this morning. So I want to show you the very end of uh, this. Uh, this was at a church. They were doing a skit to the song, and I want to show you this, and I think this is going to like uh, really prove this point very well of Jesus being a finisher. Uh, so take a look at this song, The Champion, of a church doing a skit to it. The blow of death fell Jesus to the ground. The devils roared in victory. The saints shocked and perplexed as wounds appeared upon his hands and feet. Then Satan kicked him in his side and blood and water flowed. And they waited for the ten count of defeat. God the Father turned his head, his tears announcing Christ was dead. The ten count would proclaim the battle's end. Then Satan trembled through his sweat in unexpected horror. Yet, as God started to count by saying, Ten. Hey, hey wait a minute, God. Nine. You're counting wrong. Eight. His eyes are Seven. His fingers are twitching. Six. Where's the light coming from? Five. He's alive. Let's give it up for Jesus, the champion. Come on. Now, how many, how, how many of you, like, that was your first time ever hearing that? Anybody in the room? Yeah, a couple. Oh, man. Just go home and watch the whole thing. Um, I've seen that video, uh, uh, like, uh, to this week, just like three or four times. And even standing right here, I just get chills. Even just talking about it, folks. The finishing move was in the hands of Jesus. The resurrection solidified once and for all that he was not just a good guy, that he was not just a teacher, but he was the Savior, the one and only who could actually save us from our sins. The finishing move was in his hands. I want you to fill this statement in on your handout. That's so what we're talking about this. Because of that, in Jesus, things can happen now. You can bring that up. Not just tomorrow. You can fill that in. 
Because Jesus is the champion today. He's the terminator. He's the finisher. Things can happen today. Not just tomorrow. That can happen tomorrow too, but that can happen today. And so, a couple again, a list for you today. Did you know that Jesus is the finisher of self-doubt? You know that Jesus is the finisher of anxiety, of depression, of hurts and habits and hangups, of anger and pain, of pride. He is the champion. He is the champion. He is the champion. As the process of the cross was going on in John 19, 30, uh, Jesus said, it is finished. Folks, it was fully realized at the resurrection that it was once and for all done. And then it says in our Romans text in verse 13, it says, offer yourselves to God as those who've been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness If we want, folks, if we want to reap the benefits of the finisher, of the champion, this is what it's going to take for us to give every part of ourselves, not just a little bit, not just coming to church. By the way, church doesn't save us. A relationship with the finisher, with the champion, is what saves us. As Doug comes up, we're going to get ready to close. I want to share one last scripture with you. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Look unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. It's going to take us looking into the face of the finisher, walking our lives out with the finisher, folks, for us to reap the benefits of what he provides to us. And by the way, I don't know about you, but I want him to say, Matt, that is finished. 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 And folks, as your pastor, I know many of you here, you might be visiting. We're glad you're here this morning. But those of you in the room that you're, I'm your pastor today. Folks, I want in your life for him to say, it is finished, it is finished, it is finished in your life. So that's point number two on this Easter Sunday. Brave last grace because the resurrection solidified Jesus as a finisher. Why don't you stand? I'm going to move into a time of uh, prayer this morning.